Lord of God is alone and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Try to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, our finite mind being controlled still on our old sin nature can never really appreciate nor can know in depth the grace, the privilege, the responsibility, the opportunity and the equal factor given for us to execute this protocol plan of God. Being termed as Alekenikites is new spiritual species in Christ. So that we also can show forth the glory and the presence of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our lives. the finite mind which goes in comparison to two divisions. First division heading among unbelievers like the Zakir Naik or Sheikh Hamadidat or any other unbeliever who thinks himself that he can comprehend, memorize biblical verses, Gita verses or his own Quran and try to explain in the context of the Quran those verses which they have been claimed. But whereas this man doesn't even have straight information as such, when he was preaching about the crucifixion of my Lord, having a debate with Pastor Rakudin, have totally left out some of the verses which he quotes. A verse which he takes and he tries to tell and build up subject is totally purely out of context. He doesn't even have physical observance to learn or to read the below two or three verses where the context of the subject has been very clearly explained. And that is the nature of such kind of an unbelievers who are trying to claim because it has been a strategic plan by Satan right from the beginning of the creation of mankind. Not to get this promised seed. In fact, even prior to that, not to win in this angelic conflict by the simple act of volition given to Adam. That's why it always uses those trials, those tactics, those gimmicks, those tricks, where with men not able to understand the cunning devices of Satan, those cunning fables and being ignorant of them, they have become an easy prey for such kind of a things. They should be aware of Bible doctrine more in depth. They should be aware how Satan tries to encapsulate them by their ignorance, by their negligence, by their arrogance. In fact, even blinding their eyes so that when their eyes could really open and see the Bible in the context of the subject, like Zakir Naik who reads Bible, he can understand what is the depth of information wherewith Lord's integrity cannot go against his own divine attributes of essence. Lord's integrity tells to us the one who does not believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the Savior of this mankind, that man has been termed out as spiritually dead. There is no way that man can come close enough to try to understand what it is exactly, but rather he is a spiritually dead person. So no matter how much he tries to read like Zakir Naik, the word of the Lord, 
how much he wants to understand or how much he wants to synchronize so that it could be in a memory for him whatever he teaches or tells is absolutely out of context of the subject because a spiritually dead man can never even comprehend gospel gospel is the good news which meant to say for us believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved that's it and this good news will be taken in care by the efficacious grace ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which in return acts in you as an activated human spirit and takes your weak beep of signal and unites you into the royal family of God under the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit many people who fail to realize the efficacious grace ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this unique dispensation of the church age think that they can replace with emotion in my own Christendom they can replace with jumping they can replace with speaking of tongues and which has nothing to be done with the salvation or with the efficacious grace ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit since Zakir Naik also cannot comprehend Bible doctrine, no matter whatever he reads, whatever he tries to think, whatever he comes close to understand the word of the Lord, there is no way he can come enough to understand what is it in the Bible doctrine. Far less he think he can have a debate over crucifixion, about crucifixion, our incarnation, or about even resurrection of my Lord. Since this man is spiritually dead, any unbeliever as such for him the only comprehension what he can take is nothing but gospel and if this gospel is not been presented for him lucidly as clear as it can be in the mechanics even these unbelievers can be like failures of that Nicodemus who was so fool to ask a question how is it possible for me to go to second time towards my mother's womb? That will be the understanding of the finite mind. And this finite mind, if it cannot know, nor appreciate, nor learn, nor recognize the great privileges of all time bestowed upon this unique dispensation of the church age, then never will it realize the true purpose, never will it come to know the true worth by which they have been called and chosen to serve the Lord by a simple act of faith alone in Christ alone. Zakir Nayak may have much memory power to quote back the verses, but he is quoting those verses out of context of the subject. In fact, even if you could read carefully the below two or three verses about Christianity, if you could have a better knowledge like the lawyer who is in the court of the law where they serve, then you will realize the clauses, the condition, the cause and the effect. But Bible is not such kind of a phenomena which could be written rationally or empirically. Bible is been written by Theonostas and some of the things encouched in logical manner Bible demands the original languages of the exegesis for accurate interpretation it requires isagogical and infective and categorical backgrounds of the subject of the study and above all Bible demands that a believer I am very specific not an unbeliever but whereas a believer the one who has expressed his volition to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone the believer who can comprehend or who is having a desire to know the truth to love the Lord and to give top priority for the conditions of Bible doctrine the believer is being demanded the one who has expressed his volition that he has faith alone in Christ alone for his salvation 
then his human spirit gets activated because there is no difference between a unbelievers and whereas a believers common and efficacious grace ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit before believing in the Lord a believer is also spiritually dead no doubt he may be born as a progeny into the Christian family until and unless he takes the responsibility upon his shoulders until and unless he realizes and gets the realization that he needs Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be the Shekinah indwelling in him to be the Shekinah which rules and reigns in him and by a simple act of faith because from the childhood he knows the practices and the rituals that are happening in the churches today so he expresses volition and he realizes that he is the only savior and that work should come by the teaching ministry of their parents at home and if their parents fail to teach that small kid the necessary the importance of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ then it will be a shame and reproach upon their parents who have really spared the weak as well as the discipline to be given for him not only into the theological realm of Bible doctrine about Christ but also even the discipline that is required to survive as a human being in this world so no matter how you come up either in the form of a church or in the form of an unbeliever Lord God the Holy Spirit acts in you as an activated human spirit because before believing in Christ your situation is spiritually dead and Romans 6 and 7 very clearly differentiates between this in a two in a very one simple example differentiating between two man who controls a woman the first one is a diverse old in nature the second one is the present husband so when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ your activated human spirit being indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit to a common and efficacious grace your ex-husband doesn't have any authority over you your ex-wife also cannot have any authority over you because of the tyranny what she has been practiced among you and you gave her a divorce you know Bible Daxon also tells it is better for us to stay far away from a contentious and an angry woman but here constantly in your each and every cell you have the old sin nature indwelling in you it can go only at the moment of your physical death or at the rapture until then you have this diverse wife or diverse husband in you and it always wants to tempt you so that you can give a say to it give a heed to it that is what your old sin nature deeds have been manifested in the flesh this old sin nature deeds wherewith suppose by any chance of temptation either by thought word or deed you do it a sin a sin which is towards your good or towards your evil which is towards your Christian moral degeneracy a Christian immoral degeneracy and trying to pay back that good that trying to pay back that evil by your good deeds penance tithes that is what your diverse husband is trying to rule over you dear brethren but what does the present husband do now he is grieved he is quelched the present husband is indwelling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so how do you get back to him that means you need to totally neutralize the powers and the rulement of your old sin nature which meant to say in the Bible do not walk in the flesh but rather walk in the spirit the deeds of the flesh are very clearly manifested the deeds of the flesh have been very clearly summarized in 2nd Peter 1 in, in 1st Peter chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 all form of hypocrisy evil slanderings maligning judging gossiping overt sins mental attitude sins and sins of the tongues and what do you need to take you need to take the sincere spiritual milk like a childhood who consumes that spiritual milk and washes out from all such kind of a stupid activities in this world 
And that is what your old sin nature tries again to come back. And you should be becoming so great in the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that your old sin nature, like a hungry dog, should be waiting outside so that either of any of your temptations of your trials or in your sufferings, you could throw some crumbs or some scrubs of bread or for some biscuits. It should be perished in such kind of a manner. It should be in hunger of such kind of a manner that you never give your heed or instruction to your diverse old sin nature. And that is how it is possible. It's possible to rebound constantly filled of the spirit constantly controlled of the spirit filled is a wrong translation of the KJV and people have many multivariated concepts about the filling of the spirit and speaking in tongues and doing miracles and healings which is another distortion of right, rightly dividing the word of truth these are the men, though they have the completed canon of scripture, they are not able to see, they are not able to perceive. These are the men, though they have been told about Bible doctrine, they are not able to hear, though we have the completed canon of scripture into our hands. Why these men have become like that? The men do not love the Lord, that's as simple as that. The men do not desire for the truth. If they would have really loved Lord God Almighty, do you know, brother, and what would have been happening? They would have really searched diligently more than those barriers because the barriers were the congregation which went around to look what was the doctrine Apostle Paul was teaching and what did they have in their hands. They had the Old Testament parchments. So when they had the Old Testament parchments, this new doctrine of the church age has not been given to them, has not been revealed to them. But now when we have the completed canon of Scripture into our hands, dear brethren, what it is that is hindering you to know the word of the Lord. You need to cross-check yourself. You need to examine. You need to come around and judge yourself into the mirror of the word of the Lord and look your own concise and tell why are you ignorant for Bible doctrine. Is your pastor teacher negative? Then pray for the Lord so that he can give you good pastor teachers who can feed you with knowledge and with understanding. And if you do not have time, pray for the Lord to make you time so that you can learn Bible doctrine because without learning Bible doctrine your life is null and void in this church age without knowing the love of the Lord without understanding the purpose the meaning, the definition of this new spiritual spaces wherewith you have been called to show forth the glory of the Lord to the maximum and so great privilege and responsibility laid down upon our shoulders to be understood without knowing this dear brethren your life doesn't have any meaning in this earth. You may be having your salvation secured by a simple act of faith, by faith alone in Christ alone. But your spiritual life, your unique protocol plan of God, your unique mystery doctrine of the church age, your unique escrow blessings for time as well as for eternity, and your unique use of your royal priesthood and for your royal ambassadorship. You are never and not at all using those privileges laid down upon you. In fact, when the so-called more on average minister is occupying the pulpit to preach these things, he doesn't even have a clue as such what are these things, rather than he spends his time much of the things telling about sin and his personal sins, how he was earlier believing in Christ, how God helped him, and now how he is helping the Lord. And much of the things about the morality standards. In fact, even a believer, unbeliever who is going to go to hell is far more superior morally than a believer who is going to go to heaven. Do you know that? Because an unbeliever has some standards as well to be maintained. Those standards of human integrity, those standards of human loyalty, and those standards of human royalty as well. Aren't you ashamed to meet even those standards in your lifetime? You will never even try to meet those standards of morality. You know why? You are a deceiver. Because you are deceiving Lord God Almighty. When you are not able to stay straight with Lord God Almighty, how can ever or anyone can trust you in this world? 
when your relationship only with Lord God the Father is not straight, is not right, is not upright, is not correct. How can you think, dear brethren, that you have something more to be done? You can never do something more to this world when you are not able to stand firm to the Lord. In the dying declaration of King David telling to his son Solomon, he didn't say, serve these people faithfully, serve these men faithfully. But you know what was the great command he gave to him? Serve the God of thy fathers with a willing heart, and with a willing mind, and with a perfect heart. Those are the true great conditions which have been required for any believer in this church age. Though they had the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though they couldn't have the completed canon of scripture into their hands, in fact, even not even the Old Testament one, the greatest realization of King David, what he told to his son at the end of his journey, serve the Lord God of thy father with a willing mind and with a perfect heart. And that's what the perfection of our heart, which I want to tell you all right from the minute one of this tape. Because when we are out of fellowship, we are grieving Lord God the Holy Spirit, we are squelching Lord God the Holy Spirit, and when we are though being diverse and being married to the new man, we are still having communication with the old husband, that meant to say you are grieving and squelching the present husband, the present husband is indwelling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, and the old diverse man is your old sin nature, and correction of your old sin nature, and thinking that being yourself pious, piety, and in fact even trying to look that you can have the refined all sin nature is not at all the purpose of the church age believers to be in this world. This all sin nature throwing out, neutralizing its powers and cutting short its influence upon you is done already on the cross when you believe upon Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But now, if you give heed to your old sin nature, if you are being ignorant of doctrine, if you are not able to understand the omnipotent power that has been found in the written word of the Lord, then your old sin nature still tries to rule and reign over you and each and every thought. That's why we have been told, get every thought into captivity for Christ. How is it possible? If you are always been on the present husband, being controlled of this present husband, who energizes in return your activated human spirit. And this activated human spirit goes for your mind and controls each and every thought, being bent into captivity of Christ and gets, get, gets the thought into the norms and standard form of the Bible doctrine and it cross-checks whether it has been brought unto Christ or not. And what does the Bible say? If it is right, you follow that. What does the Bible say? If it is wrong, then leave it off. That is what you get every thought into captivity for Christ. And Bible always demands that it is not your sacrifices, it is not your XYZ activities, but rather it is only the knowledge of doctrine that Lord desires on your part. But men have changed the criteria in today's Christendom. Men are telling, if you could want to have a right and peaceful life with the Lord, you need to do such and such things. You need to pay penance. You need to pay tithes. You need to come to a church. You need to raise your hand. You need to walk an aisle. You need to speak in tongues. The total contrary of the teachings of Bible doctrine. Dear brethren, the only one simple thing what I want to tell to you all. You may be teaching your things in your pulpits. You may be practicing those denominational things which they have been taught for you away from Bible doctrine or the reality what you could find in the exegesis of Bible doctrine. But remember, Lord recognizes only those standards which Lord has set. He cannot go against his integrity. He cannot go against his divine attributes. He cannot go against his essence at all. And those divine standards, what Lord calls to do his ministry, is to use number one, rebound. First, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, number two criteria is always be constantly filled or controlled of the Spirit. And how to be constantly controlled of the Spirit? By the confession of our sins through rebound. 
because at the moment of salvation you have been put into the divine dynasty or divine palace but either by thought word or deed because you have been tempted by your old husband that is what your divorced husband and what does it do what does it happen you will sin either by thought word or deed so how to get back and to be in fellowship with this new husband rebound 1 john 1 9 confession of your sins and when you confess your sins and take number one priority for Bible doctrine and following those things which Lord said for us if you love me you keep my commandments if you do whatsoever I tell you then you are my friends reaching to that status quo realizing to the point if you are not in that branch we will never yield the fruit and Christ is the true wine and we are his branches and if you are not in Christ meant to say if you are not in the doctrine of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if you are not able to know and to look and to understand and analyze the word of the Lord and where is the point of we staying alive to Christ though we have been given this physical breath? You know what? You are a traitor. Because you are not living your life to the plan of God which Lord has bestowed upon you graciously. If a mother has ten children, in that eight are failures and two are successful, is there any problem with the teaching of the mother? Or she has taken care of them till they could reach for their own concise understanding. And afterwards they went, they led their life and they went astray. Whose is the problem? Hasn't mother given equal privilege and opportunity for them? Hasn't mother taken care, has mother not taken proper care for them? Of course, indeed, she has done, taken an absolute care for them, for the ten people alike. She didn't show any partiality on them. Exactly, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been given for us equal privilege and equal opportunity irrespective of your rational spaces. Now, after believing in Christ, you are the church. And in this church, what Lord has looked upon you has nothing to be done. What you are thinking that Lord has given for me in the past is great. Lord will be giving me in the future is great. So that's why we can have the things done and Lord will bless me. You need to correct your thinking, dear brethren. Lord will bless only them who are reaching in his maturity for spiritual capacity. In fact, when the blessing which has been imputed for us because of the imputed righteousness, that blessing has nothing to be done for your material exposition or for your material growth. That blessing has no way to be related. The blessing which Lord God counts is only the blessing of spiritual realm when you grow up in Bible doctrine. And it is a desire of Lord God the Father that each and every believer also has the same privilege of I am thirsty which Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke on the cross. Because the fulfillment of Psalm 69.21 telling to the point I am thirsty gives us a clear understanding to be understood. That we though being in human nature, human flesh, we need to have same joy, reverence, absorption, realization into the word of the Lord, which is Bible doctrine, dear brethren. And if you're not able to understand this word of the Lord more clearly, more accurately, then what is the purpose of your survival in this world, dear brethren? Have you ever thought of this? Have you ever been realized why you have been kept alive in this world even after your salvation? And what are these two husbands that have been trying to rule over you? One is a diverse one, the other one is a present one. And since you are not under the controlling power ministry of the present one, of your present husband, you either end up in good deeds of human good, which are ministers cloth, you either end up evil to the core, being immoral in this humanity where you are surviving. Either you end up leading towards Christian moral degeneracy, and that is what your life will be there thinking that you are pious, thinking that the things are right with you with the Lord, and Lord is going to bless you because of your own standards that you are performing in your own energy of your flesh. Lord doesn't want any one of your sacrificings, your tithes or your money or XYZ activities, dear brethren. Lord wants on your part, on your behalf, that you learn his doctrine, you tune up your mind, renovate your thinking as per Bible doctrine demands. 
And if you're not able to understand that, pray for the Lord to give you those pastors who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding, dear brethren. Many men might have come to teach those things which are fitting right unto his own eyes, or right unto his own mind. But until and unless they take a note from Bible doctrine, until and unless they try to realize these things to be thought accurately, even a minister is failing to realize that the finite intelligence can never comprehend the infinite intelligence. That's why for each and every believer, they have been given this privilege of indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who in return teaches to you those things which have been pertaining, containing to Bible doctrine. And since this man failed to understand the simple dogmatical truths, they always search substitutes, and those substitutes are cheapest of all time in this unique dispensation. If you could tell those substitutes in the Old Testament ritualism, that would be going and giving sacrifice in the temple. Today, you cannot give those sacrifices to the Lord, but what you can give, you can give your body as a living sacrifice, giving your body to learn Bible doctrine, to sit and study, and if it is more possible, to kneel down and to read the Bible upon your knees, so that you can learn the word of the Lord, and tomorrow, this word of the Lord should not stand against you as a testimony, telling to the point, you have not given number one priority for Bible doctrine. If your eyes have not fallen in a particular passage, if your eyes have not read that Bible, then that Bible will tell he has read only these verses, but he has left the other verses. Bible will tell he has read only those passages, he has preached only these passages, and he has left other passages to be preached or to be read. So that should not be a blame upon you at the judgment seat of Christ. Bible should give you a testimony telling to the point he was absolutely reverence towards your word, Lord, and he has read upon his knees, he has written the word upon your knees and he gave that absolute reverence to my and he has given me those things to the Bible that he has gone through each and every word he has gone through each and every dot he has gone through each and every comma semicolon each and everything he has taken and he has read it Lord that should be your testimony dear brethren and if you're failing to give that testimony on part of you then your finite intelligence can never get along with that. It is only that infinite intelligence which in return energizes your activated human spirit so that your human spirit can give top priority for your mind, for your thinking, for your mentality, to give top priority for Bible doctrine. Many men fail to realize the simple dogmatical truths. What they are doing, they are replacing with the gimmicks of cheap tricks of a pastor teacher being played in the pulpits. And since... The finite man can never comprehend the infinite things of Bible doctrine. It is better for the unbeliever to believe in Christ and to get that activated human spirit. Not only Zakir Naik or any one of the followers apart from Christianity, they may try to get those things comprehended which are not theonistos, which are not God-breathed. But Bible doctrine is a God-breathed and it is a tough time for any unbeliever to comprehend the Bible and try to preach it depths. Far less a believer also who has been given this gracious spiritual gift of a pastor teacher to rightly divide the word of truth without having proper preparation, without having proper study, without having like a faithful drudge to rightly divide the word of truth, digging the word from ice concept, which is isagogical, categorical, maxological exposition, followed by the things of dispensing technique, which is only the key of dispensation in rightly dividing the word of truth. Even he also cannot comprehend Bible doctrine. Many people might have come, they we call it as average moron minded, because whenever we go for a market to buy some meat or some fish or for any such kind of a things which they can consume, you know what do they do? They always look the best quality. They want to take the superior one. They need to tell to us this goat head doesn't have brain in it. How are you purchasing? It needs brain and brain is the important point of that goat head and why have you left it out? When man is so much intelligent, so much clever enough to realize and to analyze what it is there and what it is to be purchased and what is to be taken for his physical body which will perish after some years in this world. How much more, dear brother, and you and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ need to be careful enough what sort of spiritual food you are consuming. Whether the spiritual food has been taken from the original Greek, Hebrew, or Aramic or not. Whether the spiritual food has been rightly divided to the dispensing technique of dispensations or not. Men are very clever. Concerning to the worldly things, they are very clever. They are very sharp. They are very intelligent. But concerning to the biblical realm, their minds are dull. You know why? They are 
ignorant of knowing the truth. That's why Lord has also laid down upon their shoulders very clearly, telling to the point. If they desire, if their hearts were right, then the King Jehoshaphat reign would have pulled down those altars. Even King David told Solomon, if your mind is willing and if your heart is perfect, then only you can serve that living Lord. Even for us, if our heart is not being searched diligently, to know and to understand what it is in Christ, to know and to realize what are the purposes in Lord. Until then you can never know what is Bible doctrine. Exactly the believer's heart, mind and soul is not right to get that accurate, genuine, spiritual manna of this Bible doctrine from a right pastor teacher. Till then, though he is a believer, he doesn't have any traits of difference between an unbeliever. Because an unbeliever never knows and never values Bible doctrine. In fact, even this believer also never knows and never values Bible doctrine, but rather just coming to the church to pay his tithes, and tithes are no way concerned in the New Testament, but rather to come and give his offerings. That's it, what the best he can do. At the end of the year of one year of invocation or, or, or annual day, what they have in the church, he wants to donate some food for the poor, he wants to donate some clothes for the poor. And that's what he tells, that I have a good name in my church. And my church membership is right. And you know what the committee also they do? Committee are also interested in such kind of a person who give money to them so that they can give him some good honors. So that they can give, so that they can take proper care for his family's marriages and his family burials. Why? Not with the integrity and the bond based upon Bible doctrine and the love that motivates them to be learned and to be directed from Bible doctrine but because of that money which is giving for the church, which is so pathetic to the core to be taught and to be realized in the churches today. Where is the true bond of doctrine today in church age? People are not interested into that looking of the true bond in Christ. People are inter interested in looking for the rituals of your material wealth, and they want to bless, and they want to take you from those material bless. And shall I ask you one more thing? Why are you to best of the blessing of the Lord telling God bless you? You are replacing the idiom of thank you with God bless you. Why are you to bless? Have you ever thought the integrity and the character of my Lord? Those standards even you as a minister can never meet. Though you call in today's Christendom reverence. They call themselves as reverence. Not as a pastor teacher. They want to be called as a new one, as a reverend which doesn't have any significance, which doesn't have any qualification for you even to look and call that name. And do you really bless? If it is not the grace work of Christ to the pipeline of indwelling righteousness in us, where with Lord God the Father blesses because of that righteousness in you which has been imputed, and you as a believer can be called as a reverend, are you omniscient? Are you omnipotent? Are you omnipresent? Only Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God the Father, the Godhead can have that name as a reverend. No believer can have it. The best what a believer can have is a saint. And the designation of the spiritual gift headed by a pastor teacher, that's it. And apart from that, he doesn't have anything more or anything less. As a believer, you are a saint. That's it. And when you can become a reverend, why you want to take and place your foot into the attributes of my Lord and try to get for your name? You need to correct those things. And you can never have that authority and the power to bless. It is God's work to bless you when you grow up in Bible doctrine. The best what you can do is to train them up. But in today's Christian messages, if you could find anyone who donates to the church, they say, God bless you. Who are you? Do you think your supplications will work? Are you that kind of a man of a prayer like Joshua, like Jeremiah, who have been told when Joshua prayed, the sun and moon stand still for 24 hours literally. When Jeremiah prayed, he was being told not to pray for these people. 
Have you that caliber in you? Because those were the men, they realized the integrity and the character of the Lord, and they followed that character of the Lord by learning and knowing Him. Today, can you do that? As a pastor teacher, have you known the law of the Lord? Have you known Bible doctrine? Have you understood His word? Simply using your tongue to tell, bless the Lord. God bless you. In fact, when the psalmist, when he was praying, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He didn't say, Lord bless you, O my soul. Know the difference when any believer tells to you, Praise the Lord. And any moron believer who just wishes you, God bless you. Understand the difference and try to know the truth because the truth alone can set you free. It is my earnest appeal and plea for you. It is not a command. It is not any other thing so that I am totally condemning you through my messages. I don't have any pleasure. The only thing is that we need to look our standards in the light of Bible doctrine and come back and worship the Lord wherewith you and I have been kept alive. And that's what I look and not any other things apart from those things which you are thinking. That I am simply condemning many people in my messages. No way, no chance at all. I want my Christian believers to be like um, to become like lions who have knowledge of Bible doctrine. And you know this is one of the third category. The first one will be the cherub, the second one will be the man, the third one will be a lion, and the fourth one will be a eagle. And these two attributes are been to be traded out in each and every believer like a lion fearless, like an eagle swift to go and tell the message. That is what your use of your ambassadorship. Like a lion, like a bold, go unto the Lord because of the thorn grace and go and confess your sins. And that's what we are not able to do, dear brethren. We are replacing the word of the Lord with the useless and worthless things of this earth. So with this few exhortations, I'll end my tape. And in the next step, we shall continue the responsibility towards the pastor teachers. And answer by Zachary Nike went through that realm as well. But only one thing which I want to conclude. Infinite intelligence has been required. And that infinite intelligence is the present husband controlling you after salvation. That is the indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if Lord God, the Holy Spirit doesn't control you, then no matter what it is, you can never try to come close to know what is Bible doctrine. No matter how much you weep, you fast, you plea unto the Lord. If you are not under the controlling power minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are totally out of focus. And how to get controlling power means of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He already indwells in you. The only thing is your confession of your sins and not to grieve him, not to scourge him. And when Lord God, the Holy Spirit controls you, your top priority will be Bible doctrine to study and teach or to study and learn Bible doctrine so that you can grow up in the knowledge of the Lord and follow the rules and regulations which have been best of for us in this unique dispensation of the church age. And for a pastor teacher, it is to preach the word. Whereas for one believer it is in the common and efficacious grace to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life, in the privacy of their soul, when they tell you not ability to guard the Father, that they believe upon His Son, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. And this eternal life is for their own and it is for them only by a simple act of faith. Faith alone in Christ alone. But whereas for a believer, it is to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Whereas for a pastor teacher, it is to preach the word. And the next step we shall continue our discourse. So Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these things, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in the name of King of kings and Lord of lords, even Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose name we pray, Father. Amen.